how would you like to combine the best shot from the golden hour with your best image from the blue hour, sandwich it together in post-processing and get the best of both worlds. In this tutorial on time blending, Ray visits Rocks Road on his local waterfront in Nelson. Here, he focuses his camera on an iconic restaurant named the Boatshed Cafe. Using CPL and ND grad filters, Ray shoots the cloudy sky at sundown. An hour later, he records the lights of rush hour traffic, which he will blend with the first image in Photoshop to form a composite. Hey, it's Ray Salisbury here from Nelson, New Zealand. I've got a quick question for you. How would you like to combine the best image from Golden Hour with the best image from Blue Hour, sandwich it together in post-processing and get the best of both worlds? We're going to do exactly that. We're going to shoot the iconic restaurant behind me, which cantilevers over the Nelson Haven. We're going to shoot the sunset behind it. An hour later, we're going to do another sequence of images um, with long exposures on bulb mode. The tide will be entering the Blue Hour, There'll be a good clear sunset and there'll be rush hour traffic because it's nearly winter. This advanced Photoshop technique is called time blending and if you know how to use your camera and you've got the determination to get out there and experiment, fail, go back again and have that tenacity to keep going back to the same location until you nail the shot and you get the right conditions and you've got the sort of personality where you can, um, where you like planning things. Um, you'll find this really rewarding and exciting form of photography. Right, I will get to our location and begin the tutorial. Because there's only room for one photographer here. Let's get the camera gear set up. I will talk you through my composition. Now in terms of location, I've shot this location at least twice before. Um, with different results and it's one of my favourite corners of Nelson where I live. Over here on the left of the frame is a hanging chain fence. This was installed more than a hundred years ago and paid by a rich benefactor named Thomas Cawthron. The chains provide a really good lead-in line to my focal point, the Boatshed Cafe, which you may note is on the rule of thirds. That is, the sky takes up one third of the photo, while the land and sea use up two thirds. Now I'm in position, I just have to wait for the sun to fire up the sky. Right, let's talk about camera settings. With any long exposure, you need a rock solid tripod that you can lock down for several hours. This is critical with advanced techniques such as time blending. If you bump the tripod, it's all over Rover, because it's nearly impossible to fix in post. So, it's imperative you use a cable release to trigger the shutter. This also enables you to fire off frames at precise moments. In this case, it's when a long stream of traffic is passing. Okay, next, we're going to turn my circular polarizer on. Notice how the sky gets progressively darker and the clouds stand out a lot. Okay, that's off. Turning my CPL filter on, now you get nice blue sky. The colours of the clouds are far more saturated. That's nice. And the next thing I want to do is add a soft ND grad filter. Watch it as it comes down into the lens, it's just going to darken that sky a tad. Okay, I'll lift it off, lift it back on, okay. I'm focusing on the building using live view, then locking the focus to manual. I have checked the exposure on the histogram, one quarter of a second, F11, ISO 100. Let's fire off our first shot. All I am concerned with is capturing a dramatic sky with candy floss clouds. Now we must wait an hour after sunset. At the end of the blue hour, it will be dark enough to see the traffic trails. Let's switch our mode dial to bulb. We could use manual mode, but this is limited to a maximum time of 30 seconds. I will remove my Nessie filters from the front of the lens as they are now unnecessary. Wow, the rush hour traffic is getting heavy. 
Let's revise our camera settings. For my blue hour shot, I've closed down the aperture to f16. That is to get the starburst effect on the stationary street lights. ISO remains on 100 to reduce any digital noise. On bulb mode, I'm experimenting with an exposure of about 40 seconds. When using long shutter speeds, there's a lot of leeway. For instance, there's not much difference between, say, 40 seconds and 60 seconds. Let's get shooting. This is my best shot, taken about halfway through the blue hour. The tide was full, the traffic was thick, and the starbursts on the streetlights worked a treat. One final tip. Start your long exposure when a long line of vehicles are about to enter the frame. Time the exposure to record the headlights of oncoming cars and the taillights of cars going in the reverse direction. You need a pleasing balance between red and yellow artificial light. If you want to learn advanced Photoshop techniques like these, enroll in my full course. Or watch the next episode where I embark on an ambitious mission to shoot the dawn over the majestic Fororiki beach. Then I get dark and dirty inside a sea cave, teaching exposure bracketing, before making another dawn pilgrimage to Cape Farewell. <laughs>